Hey there, CPO here, and I uh, want to go over a little bit uh, about the uh, the work I'm doing on my 450. Uh, and basically, essentially, um, I'm going to be pinning the tail boom uh, down. Uh, so uh, this came as a little bit of a surprise. I wasn't expecting to need to do this, uh, but uh, I am now a huge proponent of uh, pinning the boom, and I'll tell you why. So I was doing a little bit of work. Um, actually, I wanted to do a video demonstration uh, of uh, demonstrating uh, gyro gain and tail wag. And so I made this little contraption. Uh, you know, it's a you know, little turntable contraption, which turned out to be great to demonstrate uh, what I want to demonstrate. So you'll see that video uh, coming up here pretty soon. But I wanted to talk about uh, setting tail gain and, and uh, demonstrating that true tail wag. Um, the interesting thing is uh, when I put the heli into some unusual situations, like a 100% gain, uh, on the gyro, I was getting that that uh, that heavy wag. Um, I did a couple things, and uh, one of them, <laughs> actually, I, I did I did really one thing, and that was uh, it pushed the servo locked up and pushed the tail boom um, out of the heli. Pushed it so far to the point that the tail uh, rotor actually stopped spinning, and uh, and I knew that something was wrong. Uh, so. Uh, I am living proof, thankfully safely in a controlled environment uh, on this platform, that, uh, that you can push the boom out with a servo. And one of the things I, I thought was interesting, and I, I was uh, something I, I had thought may be a saving grace uh, with the build, or with the helicopter in general, is, uh, is I thought that these, uh, these tail braces would actually pre prevent the heli, uh, the boom from coming out. And what I found is, is quite the contrary, it actually just pushed them out. Uh, so this whole thing was, was pushed out uh, literally uh, probably an inch or so. And uh, this uh, tail brace assembly actually did nothing to prevent the, uh, the tail boom from slipping out. Uh, I did have I did have my little uh, tail bracket here, uh, which held everything together in one place, which is why it looks uh, the way it does. Um, but this basically, this glue that holds these ends on just popped right off. So I'm going to re-CA glue this, uh, put them back together. And, uh, and then I have my tail uh, boom pushed all the way in. And so what I'm going to do is, uh, is I'm going to put a screw in here, and uh, the way Finless Bob describes, basically drill a hole. Uh, through this uh, this front block into the uh, the assembly, and uh, I'm going to use a little screw. Um, actually, had one of these little screws um, laying around. Uh, it's the smallest one I could find. Uh, it's just a leftover sc screw from the build. Um, I'm going to use it. Um, I think uh, the key here is you don't want to have a screw so long that it screws uh, through the block and then into the uh, the tail boom and then into the actual torque tube. So I don't think I'm going to have a problem with that. I think this screw will be fine for that. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do now is uh, is drill a little hole in here uh, to prepare for this screw to go in. Then I'll have to take these apart, re-CA glue them, and then uh, and then recheck all of my uh, uh, my dimensions with the uh, the tail servo. So uh, interesting. Um, like I said, thankfully, um, I did this in a controlled environment. Um, I had this little pad. Uh, as you can see, the helicopter is loose on it, uh, and that is by design. Um, and I'll, I'll go over this in a later video. But if you ever do anything like this, you don't want to you don't want to spin up the helicopter completely fixed down to the ground. Um, it's got this natural vibration resonance that needs to happen. Uh, otherwise, you can literally shake the helicopter apart. So um, this thing is literally just sitting on here. Uh, but I have it strapped down loosely uh, so that it uh, it doesn't do anything unexpected, uh, like leave the area that I have it uh, set up in. So um, anyway, so in in working out this, uh, uh, and I'll I'll show how I made this, but it was a really creative way uh, to basically uh, do some testing with the with the tail. 
Um, and of course, as a result, um, my tail boom assembly popped out um, while the heli was not in the air, but was on the ground. So I was lucky there. Uh, one other thing, uh, I did snap another screw. Uh, very frustrated um, at snapping screws. And uh, this time, the screw I snapped was right here. Um, I actually, I actually took it apart uh, so that I could get to this uh, this tail boom. You know, basically I I pulled these screws out here uh, so that I could I could uh, loosen this uh, tail block up. Get this blade out of the way. Loosen the tail block up so that I could re refix the boom in there. And uh, when I unscrewed this one, uh, it uh, the head snapped off. Uh, and this one, ironically, isn't even thread-locked. It's just a regular screw into plastic. It goes into this anti-rotation uh, bracket here. And uh, like I said, literally just um, just snap this screw off. I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to drill this out right now because I think it's it's probably not uh, not doing a lot. It's, it's actually holding the anti-rotation bracket down because the screw's still in there. It's just the head's gone. So next time I pull off this side, um, I'll actually, uh, you know, drill that out. But... Uh, you know, I'm starting to find uh, a little bit of frustration in some of the screw heads that keep breaking. These screws are notoriously soft uh, from stripping. Um, basically, the the uh, the idea is that they tend to strip pretty easy. But I, I'm not stripping screw heads. I'm literally just snapping them off all the time. Uh, so uh, that, I think this is probably the third or fourth one that I've snapped off. So. Uh, at any rate, I know it's been recommended by a lot of folks to upgrade the, uh, the screw hardware. Um, at this point, I can say that's not probably a bad idea. Um, I've, I've, I've lost enough screw heads um, to make it annoying. Uh, so, uh, anyway, and even the ones that aren't thread locked, like I said, that's just a screw through plastic. So it shouldn't have a whole lot uh, of tension holding it in place. But, at any rate, so I'm going to work on this. And uh, I'll do that along with you, and then uh, we'll go to the next uh, next step of this, which is uh, getting a drill and drilling a hole. All right, so as I get started here, I have a 1 16th inch drill bit here that I'm going to use for this. Uh, it's got a little bit of black tape around it. basically sets the length of the exposed part of the drill bit to a little bit shorter than the screw I'm actually going to use. I'm going to use it as, as a guide so that as I'm screwing into the hole, uh, it will... Uh, I can tell when I've gone in deep enough and I don't go in too deep. So I'm going to just drill right into my tail block here. You want to make sure that the tail boom is all the way in. Get that pushed in nice and exactly where you want it before you uh, before you screw this thing down. Uh, it's a little bit too late uh, once you start screwing things in. So I'm just going to start here and I'm going to go down kind of at a 45 degree angle. Just eyeballing it. Nice and slow to get it started. And I'll take my screw. Screw it down nice and snug. And there we go. Pin to tail boom. And uh, that's what it looks like. So uh, this should keep my tail boom from ever uh, forcing its way out. Uh, regardless of how much pressure is put onto it uh, by the servo. So super easy mod, uh, highly recommended, particularly after what I just went through uh, where I actually did push my tail boom out. So uh, nice simple uh, modification and uh, chances are good you're like me, you've got a few extra screws laying around from your kit build. So just make sure uh, it's not too long that it gets in the way of your, uh, your torque tube. As a matter of fact, it's probably a good idea after you do this to go ahead and uh, and spin spin your main rotors and make sure that you don't feel any binding there. And of course, my uh, my tail is uh, is moving just fine, so you can't really see it. I've got I've got a little vise here holding my my assembly still, so I didn't uh, move while I was drilling. But as you can see. Everything is nice and fits nice. So, so there we go. Uh, that is that. And uh, the tail boom 
Uh, pin mod is now complete. All right, so as mentioned uh, before with these uh, uh, support brackets, I'm gonna re-CA glue these. And basically, uh, I'm gonna put some glue in here, kind of make sure it's all, uh, you know, quite significant in there. And then I'm gonna re-thread lock this and I'm gonna put the glue in and then uh, go ahead and screw this down. That way I sh I'm sure I get everything realigned the way I want it. Uh, and uh, pushed into place. So, so there we go. Uh, got the uh, tail brackets uh, back together, the tail boom brackets. And then as you can see, have my uh, another look at the pinned boom. And uh, I'm ready to rock and roll again. So uh, I'm going to let all that dry. And uh, I'll go back to what I was working on before, which was trying to help demonstrate to you guys uh, the uh, gyro gain settings and how it impacts the heli. So anyway, uh, that'll be it, and uh, I'll catch you on the next one.